Okay, guys, I'm super excited about this one. Uh, this is John Burns Marvel Classics Artifact Edition from IDW and Marvel Comics. This came out last year before the hit fit the shan uh, with the pandemic and everything. So this was the third in three uh, John Byrne artist slash artifact editions from uh, IDW. They're basically oversized, well not oversized because they're actually the original size artwork printed um, from scans right from the copies or right from the uh, you know actual artboards so you can see um, you know a little bit about how um, the artist uh, worked and um, you know you can even see like the age of the pages and the yellowing and it just gives you an up close uh, kind of detail that you wouldn't get in the printed page and also because it's black and white you know that's cool too so it's uh you know John Byrne is one of my favorite artists and probably the most popular one of the most popular uh, comic book artists uh, of our generation so I think that a lot of people w would like having this book and seeing you know just I mean this is Byrne at the top of his game look at that great Scarlet Witch on the cover you know I think this was inked by Austin I can tell by that uh, pointillism that he uses and now this is worth these books are a little expensive I think I got this for like 125 um, maybe I only paid a hundred uh, because when books come out you can get discounts so I say look ahead with these books and order ahead because you're gonna save money and it's totally worth it because they sell out uh, there's not huge runs on these but anyway so this shows uh, what looks to be the original um, group shot of Alpha Flight my favorite John Byrne creation uh, the quirky Canadians uh, that were designed to go head-to-head -head with the X-Men and there's North Star and Aurora, Snowbird, and Guardian, Sasquatch, and Shaman. And of note, uh, North Star is largely credited with being the first gay superhero in mainstream comics to come out. And he did get married recently, so that's cool too. Uh, Luke Cage, and when he, I mean, classic Luke Cage from the 70s there. You can see these are gorgeous books. Uh, Scott Dunbeer from IDW is the editor, and I mean, he just. It's meticulous, it's gorgeous. He compiles all the artwork and the binding. Is that, does that look good, guys? Or I don't know enough about these hardbound things. Uh, look at that scroll fighting Miss Marvel. Um, did I don't know if John Byrne drew Miss Marvel per se, but I know she appeared in Marvel Team Up with Spider Man. There's a great Black Panther page. Um, this, John Byrne uh, was known for doing multiple books, team books. A lot of books at the same time. Um, I think this is from his Avengers run. I might get a little flack for saying this, but I really think he uh, was the victim of some bad anchors, and uh, I think I'd like to see the original pencils on these, just because it looks a little heavy-handed with the inks, whoever the anchor was. Um, classic uh, Nefaria. I don't know why I thought his name was Count Nefaria, but hey. Um, John Byrne makes cheesy costumes look cool. These are Avengers work. This is more from, um, like I said, this was the last, The well, hopefully there's more to come from IDW, but this is the latest one, I should say, out in 2019. Just look at that thick, thick, thick line on that brush. It just doesn't look very professional to me. I mean, it suffers a little, you know. Especially on an artist like John Byrne, he doesn't phone it in, he puts in all the work, and it's just a shame. Like, see, like I said, you can see the actual, like, wear. You can see scotch tape, you can see stains on the pages. The page is a little yellow from age. Um, you know, back in the day, they didn't know comic books, original art was not treated with the respect that it should have been. A lot of times it was thrown out, it was, you know, stained, it was ripped and scratched and just you know we're lucky to have these um some people did save the pages and um now thank god uh all the artists uh, have their original artwork returned to them which is how it should be because an artist i mean even if they want to sell it you know and make a little more money from it more power to them because you know I mean, the artist puts their heart and soul into their art, even if someone else wrote it, even if it's someone else's characters. But, uh, you know, why should the company hang on to that? It's a cute wasp face. Very 
great burn face, <laughs> burn face. Um, incidentally, um, if you're watching this, you might even belong to the Facebook group, but uh, burn victims is what uh, burn, John Burn fans are largely known as. When, when I say largely, it's that I know them as that. Uh, who's, I love Scarlet Witch. Nobody draws a better Scarlet Witch than Burn, but I say that about everybody, but it's just damn true. I love this great effect with the zip tone that had to be pasted on the page. Like nowadays, with Procreate or Photoshop, you can just slap those screens right into the work and, you know, two seconds. More great Avengers stuff. Look at all this detail in the, you know, for people who say John Burn does not draw backgrounds. He invented backgrounds, baby. <clears throat> See, once again, I think that, like, because everything's there, but a little bit of the anchor. I don't know. This is getting into, let's see, what are we getting into? Oh, this is good. I think this is uh, where we have some uh, unpublished Captain America pages from John Burns' run with Roger Stern, and I believe Joseph Rubens. Dean, famous uh, embellisher, legendary inker, was the finisher on this. Solid stuff. Roger Stern and uh, John Burns' run on Captain America was uh, well known, well loved, and I think unfinished, unfortunately. Um, the editorial differences. Look at that Dragon Man. That is so awesome. What a money shot for Burn. Whoever has that original page. I mean, that's what you want. You know, just like a, such a great character, like exploding off the page. Um, let's see. Great burn face. I think her name's Bernie. I love that, the shield. I just love the zip tone on it. It just always appealed to me <laughs> growing up. And my, with my limited special effects, um, you know, to this day, Clash of the Titans is my favorite movie, so. Oh, look, we get it again. I wonder if that's a stat. A stat means a copy of the same picture or panel, kids. Let's see. Great stuff. Now this is making me want to look at what a great page this is. Poor Cap. Um, on the front of the boat, like a freaking mermaid. This makes me want to read the Captain America run. As much of a Burn fan as I am, I haven't read everything that he's done. I feel like I've looked at most of the art, but hey, you know, someone as lucrative as Burn. I mean, this, look, this is one of three books, and they could probably do, like, they could probably never run out. That's how many penciled pages this man has under his belt. He's 70 years old, and he's still cranking them out. Uh, go to Burn Robotics and look under the fan art if you want to see a bunch of new X Burn X-Men art that he's doing for the fans. I mean, it's so solid. It's so good. The details there. I mean, it's so good to see the X-Men under Burn's pencil. I can't turn the page. Sorry, guys. I don't like to look at this a lot so to damage it. But the pages are so crisp does great use of negative space and black and whites and black spots just this is earlier in his work uh, you know what maybe oh this is probably an unused page but anytime you get a shirtless Captain America it's okay in my book and that is one thing that uh, my other friend burn fan who's gay and I agree on um, burn not only does he got draw sexy women he draws sexy good-looking heroic men, too. Spider-Man. I need one. I need, like, a banker's wax or something to turn these pages. Uh, note to self. A bunch of his earlier work. Um, I have to say, as much as I enjoy looking at this, some of it's painful to me just because, like I said, it, I... You know, maybe people will disagree with me, but I mean, you compare this to like Terry Austin's ink, you know, not around the same time, and it's just so elevated. It's, that's what an anchor should do: is elevate the the pencils of the artist. If not, be nothing else. At least be faithful and flatter them. Um, you know, some anchors are very overpowering. You can see the whiteout 
on their hair. That's the, the joy of digital inking is that the ability to correct um, mistakes is like just, um, I mean, it adds so much to your, uh, your bag of tricks. Love that great. Is it the scroll there? She's just about, that is a page or a panel right there. Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel at the time in uh, Carol Danvers, but in her original costume, which is just so great. Um, the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> See what I mean? The, um, the inks just look a little blocky to me. and So maybe we'll just go through these a little quicker. Great shot of Captain Marvel, though. Miss Marvel. Misty Knight. Gotta love her from the Sisters of the Dragon from Iron Fist. I don't know if they, this. Oh, yeah, these are Iron Fist pages. John also got his start on Iron Fist. Uh, it was one of his earliest jobs. And um, I believe they're developing him for a movie and uh, just pretending the Netflix show didn't happen. I didn't see it, but it did not get good response from what I understand. Captain Brighton. He looks very different there. It's funny how the costumes look so preposterous now. Some of them, anyway. I like Captain Britain. The, the redesign that I, Alan Davis did was good for me. Um, this must be the Marvel team-up stuff. I see big glowing balls. <laughs> we must be in arcade territory. Great shot of Mary Jane there. Very Ramita uh, senior looking, who I think established the pretty Mary Jane that we all know and love. Um, I don't think that did, was Mary Jane around when, oh no, I guess not. Ramita did introduce her. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever seen Steve with Adam. Oh no, that's Arcade. Uh, interestingly enough, I think uh, John Byrne is working with Chris Claremont on uh, Marvel Team Up and he gives Arcade credit to um, Chris Claremont for creating all that. Craven the Hunter, one of the best. I don't know why they won't do him in a movie with Spider-Man. Craven's Last Hunt, if you have not read it, by J.M. DeMattis and um, Mike Zack is one of my all-time favorite uh, psychological thrillers, uh, Spider-Man stories. The covers are amazing. Spider-Man crawling out of the grave. Um, we're still in Marvel team up here. Uh, John Byrne has always admitted that uh, Neil, Neil Adams was a heavy influence on him, and I bring that up because you can really see it. I mean, that's a Neil Adams Havoc, and I forget the name of that guy, but the living monolith, I think. But anyway, it looks very Neil Adams-ish, so it's funny because uh, I never thought so, but looking at his old work, you can see it. Poor Storm taking a bullet there. Oh, we're on to a... Fold. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Look at that double page spread. Captain America. Um, I mean, once again, I know I keep saying it, but the quintessential Captain America, John Byrne, and Steve Rogers, others name more the, the Invaders, and the Red Skull. It's funny how great he draws the Red Skull and how terrible he draws Joker. Um, anyway. Cool. I forgot about that, so that's a nice little bonus pop out there. Um, I always love when John Byrne draws space. That's a great sentinel. Um, he's drawn I, many, many a sentinel in his career, for sure. Oh, it's at the infamous Iron Man nose. Heaven for fun. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I think he was a victim to the Iron Man nose. Let's see here. Yeah. These are good. I mean, of course, you can see why uh, he really he really hit the ground running when he got to X-Men. So this is prior to that. And, you know, still great stuff. Just classic John Byrne. He's, you know, this is very early in his career. So that's also the joy of uh, comics in the 70s and the 80s and, you know, possibly the 60s. But... I can't speak of too many decades before I was born. Anyway, um, you know, it's like artists, like 
definitely cut their teeth on comics and you know if they could draw a book sometimes they just got hired and they developed their style and you can just see John Byrne getting better and better as the artwork progresses that I think that's Wolverine and the infamous uh, whatever suit that that's very uh, sick freaking right there um, let's see these are still Marvel team up, I believe. Or no, is this Iron Fist? Yeah, I think the X Men made a guest appearance. Um, not Love and the Anchor. Um, that's a great shot. <laughs> Two claws through the mask. I mean, talk about precision, right? Uh, he could probably be a, a sushi chef, as skilled as he is with those claws. Anyway. So you're not loving these things, but oh my god, Ant Man! He draws a great Ant Man. There's a great image of Ant Man somewhere that Burn drew, inked by Austin, and it's my favorite image. That looks cool. Very cool. Very cool. Love Ant Man. I haven't seen the Ant Man movie yet. I hope they got the helmet right. This looks like Star Lord, and I feel like that was his first Marvel work. Oh, it's funny, that looks like a Night Owl from Watchmen. And this is Early Burn, Star Lord stuff. Also written by Claremont. Looks like Austin Ang's beautiful work. Lots of texture. There's some Fantastic Four stuff. And Burn was also heavily influenced by Jack Kirby. Nobody draws a better thing than John Byrne, say perhaps Jack Kirby. Uh, here we go with some more Power Man. I love the headband and the afro and Misty Knight's afro. This is clearly the 70s and, you know, God bless him for trying to be progressive. Um, lots of action. Let's see here. These are gorgeous pages, so looks like we're coming close to the end. Here's some covers. This is the cover of this uh, book that we're looking at, an Avengers cover. Oh, no, these are like the standard uh, corner box heads that are always over here, and just amazing drawings. Quintessential Avengers. Okay, Captain America. I, th I think this may be an Onions cover, or maybe it was used, but it's still nice. Uh, like I said, oh, this is one of my favorite images of Dragon Man, period. Uh, this is a great Captain America work. Captain America. I think John Byrne notes his uh, team up with Batman and Captain America is one of his favorite pieces of work. I think this, I keep talking about it, but there's like eight pages that weren't used, and these might be it. Look at the gorgeous pencils. I mean, these it really photograph, photocopied really well. You can just see all the detail, the pencil strokes, beautiful burn girl face. Um, that's a great background there. Yes, these are, yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. Look at these gorgeous pages. This is for, you know, a burn completist who needs to see everything the man has drawn. And I get excited when I see something new by Burn because, uh, oh, there's that Ant Man picture I was talking about. This is a great picture of Ant Man because I feel like I've seen everything, but I guess I haven't. Here's it. Oh, Undra, <laughs> one of my favorite super heroines. Um, Guardian model sheet. Uh, I wonder who owns, owns these. Super jealous. This is, I love Aurora. She's my favorite character. And her brother. Let's lump them together. They come hand in hand. Shaman. Okay, where are we? Almost towards the end here. Uh, Sasquatch. What a great design. I just love that character. He's so fun. And I love when John draws him like jumping around and being Sasquatchy. Um, there's the grade from the double page spread, and there's an afterword by Byrne, or maybe maybe just John's biography. I call him John like I know him. 
uh, and there we go. There we have it. So this is uh, the third in the IDW books. And uh, thanks for joining and taking a look. We'll talk to you later. Bye.